Good night, YouTubers, and thank you for tuning into the Dice uh, tutorial video that I've never ever thought of doing, eh? Because I've done a lot of animated videos on YouTube. The most recent one I did was the Diwali one. The one I'm doing at the moment is the Christmas one, which is actually set to be the most, if not all, emotional videos I've made for YouTube because it's in memory of my dad's mother who sadly passed away at the age of 80. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you something because it's very important to know that I'm showing a bit of something. And what I'm actually going to be doing today is I'm actually going to be talking about Chroma King. And Chroma King is actually very much important wise. And of course I've decided to turn off some music because I don't want to get a copyright strike, obviously. Uh, the music I've used is of course um, something out of Music Bakery, but I don't want to put it out because I don't want to show it to you guys, and so I don't want to show it to you with the music on playing until it's already fully completed. But I'm going to show you a very clever technique on how I do chroma keying, and that's it. But I can't, I can't just pretty much record um, in two, uh, two bits of it because I've got a program called Ibis Paint, which is like Android's version of Procreate, but. Ibis Paint is already available on both Apple and on Android if you want to be hyper creative as you want to be as such. But I want to show you some very impressive um, animations I've made on Ibis Paint. It's actually quite impressive of just how much I've decided to go against something which is very much challenging of such. And I mean, with that being said, I don't want to go too slow on that. I've just decided to turn on the light because it's getting freaking dark because we're coming up towards winter. We're actually at the very edge of winter now. And with that being said, I'm going to have to do a jump cut right now. And I mean, this is just as what I've captured. Of course, it's apart from the footage that I've used. Um, obviously, apart from the masses and masses and masses of footage that I'll be using as part of my Malaysia trip of 2023, um, just before Christmas. Obviously, I've only filmed just a whole bunch of videos of light in Malaysia of 2023 this year of light. There's actually a lot of them, so you just wait and see as the Christmas holidays roll in. But I'm just going to click onto the Ibis Paint Animated GIFs. And let me just go into Extra Large Icons so I can show you what animations I've been creating. <laughs> okay, so most importantly, I go into this website called Ibis Paint. Oh, it's actually an app program, very similar to Procreate, but it's both done via Android and via Apple, of course. And it's so similar to Procreate, if you really want to get your heads in into very good animations, of course. And um, that's what it looks like. Of course, I might as well just repeat the whole damn video up. Is there a whole repeat thing? Oh, that's this one here. Uh, repeat it all. There you go. This is what it looks like. Uh, the bird is flying. Yeah, but can you see that there's a logo here? It says Ibis Paint. Let me show you another animation. This is actually quite a fast and fluid and smooth animation I did. This is so different to how I animate on Microsoft Paint. Instead of just doing a frame by frame type basis, instantly, all I did was just somewhat different. The only difference was, was that, I mean, it was pretty much the same, but not the same. So, well, let me just tell you what's basically the same. The same thing is, is that it's an animated feature. Of course, I know Ibis Paint, you can do like drawings and stuff, but Microsoft Paint, you can only just do drawings, but on Ibis Paint, you can do animations um, assistantly. Uh, you can do animations assisted-wise, because obviously there's an animation assist type tool here, which is really, really nice, and I like it. Here's another animation I've decided to um, implement. This is a magpie robin with a Santa cap and a scarf, of course. I'm doing a Christmas themed animation. And as you can see, of just how awesome it actually is. But I can see the Ibis Paint logo on it. Of course, if I go into full screen, it's a bit much more clearer. But I've just noticed there's a, an Ibis Paint logo here. But. Let me just show you a bit of a trick on how I got rid of that whole damn thing. And if I press pause, I'm going to show it to you. There's actually a couple of ways of doing such. It depends on whatever animation I've been making. And let me just show it to you. So the first thing I did 
was that I converted my already done animations via MS Paint. And the thing was, was that there's actually two options. Uh, one option was to crop the animation. The other was to actually, guess what, censor the, lo the logo itself, the watermark itself. Um, the video watermark, of course, was pretty much a nuisance. And the only solution was, if I go back to Chrome, like so, okay, I've decided to pretty much stop looking at anime, because obviously it was distracting my head in, but of course this, first thing I did was I created something interesting, I did a little exchange from going from video to animated GIF, and i had gone into this section here, and what it was, was that I've gone into that section here, and the best thing I can actually do is to convert these uh, MP4 videos, MP4 and not MP3 because it's not a music file, this is a video file we're talking about. I converted these into a GIF. Most importantly, if I go ahead and show you the Crying Serpent Hawk, which I might as well just implement here. This is what I've just made. It's a great animation, but um, hey, it's a nice one. Um, most important, I think this one's very, very simple because. Uh, but before I can go into that, let me just show it to you and how I censored the whole damn logo of such. It definitely is quite a very simple technique, and let me just show it to you. Uh, it's just gone past half past three as I'm making the whole video of such. And really, I'm just showing you the principles of how simple it is. If I grab this image, which I've already have done, this is a common koal bird. Oops, sorry. Um, I'm meant to grab the GIF input output of this file here, uh, which is this one here. And if I grab this, drag and drop this, press upload of course, it's just as I've done it now. I've just clicked upload. If you hear the click, then well done. That's nice. Um, I'm just waiting for it to upload. Um, but yeah, I'll show you the final result. So all I did was I just got rid of the Ibis Paint watermark because it was blocking and doing my head in. And it's, there you go, this is what I got rid of. The Ibis Paint watermark is gone. What I also do is that what I've actually done, sorry I've just accentuated my words so badly I can't really talk these days. Crikey, so I could get potentially fired from jobs like that, eh? <laughs> oh, right, so... What I did was I covered the Ibis Paint watermark here by just drawing a rectangle, like so. And then the next thing I often do is go to solid color. And then I just type in a certain color. Or just there's no eyedropper in this in this thing here. All I had to do was just to simply type in whatever color code type word it was, and then I just typed in the color and then submit. And then after pressing submit. Guess what happens? The logo vaporizes and it just disappeared. That's one particular trick I always tend to do. And that's a great way if you want to get rid of any watermarks, if you want to make very good animations, like a very cruddy but very good looking mashup of a certain animation that you're producing. And that's how I tend to do. Okay, going back to VSDC Video Editor. I'll show you how I've decided to do some chroma keying of such. And really, I should just try and play out of what I've done so far, hey? Look at that, it's raining. There's a bit of thunder and lightning because that's what Malaysia is all about. It's raining so hard. And it's very laggy because of how it is. There you go, it's like that. There you go. Look at the um, the birds, they're all moving. Look, at, look how the birds are... That I've just added, they all have movement features because it was all done by VSDC Video Editor. I made the movie, it wasn't a frame by frame type movement, it was all just done by. It was actually. It's actually kind of similar to Adobe Anime or Adobe Flash. Very similar. I hate to think how much time I would potentially spend to produce an amazing animation of such. But it looks totally awesome. Seems like that, you know, I've upgraded to a new high. This is incredible. Yeah, it's a nice combination of what I've done, hey? They're much smoother than the Microsoft Paint animations I've done of such. But, in order to show you on how I've done the Chroma King technique, 
Um, let me just show you like those chickens and the rain outside. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you as such. Uh, let me just go ahead and grab the eagle or hawk. I think it's a crested serpent eagle, but I might be totally wrong. I think it's a species of bird of prey that I commonly see a lot in Malaysia. It's the most common type of bird of prey I often tend to see in Malaysia. And if you don't know what a crested serpent eagle looks like, if you're no ornithologist, well, that's what they look like. Yeah, they look very much like the sort of bird that you tend to find in arid areas, but they're actually from the tropics. Uh, amazing birds, um, completely and utterly nice of such. They're very, very graceful and very beautiful birds. Crested super eagles, they're probably about the same size as a buzzard. Um, might be totally wrong, or maybe the same size as a sparrowhawk or a goshawk. It's got a very interesting bird of prey. I mean, look at that. I mean, look at the physical appearance of this bird. It's very... Raptorial, because it's a bird of prey, you can see the hook beak on it. There's the other picture of it here. And there's another picture, of course. That looks totally nice. And that's very beautiful. And there's another section of it here. I, oops, sorry about my fingers. That's a beautiful raptor. Nice bird of prey, eh? I love the wing colours and stuff. I often found in wet grasslands. That's quite interesting about this bird, like wet savanna type areas. But well, these birds are from Asia, as obvious as it sounds. They're found in jungles, they're found in grasslands, they're not too bad actually. Quite a very nice bird indeed. Very, very nice. Mmm, very good. Let me just do a jump card and show you what it looks like. Okay, as funny as it sounds, I caught it a serpent hawk. Because I just didn't want to call it as an eagle, I want to call it as a hawk. An eagle is a hawk, a hawk is an eagle, because you know, you know, bird of prey typings, obviously, and I'm gonna go ahead and move the whole background, the Rooney type thingy bob like so, and I'm gonna scroll it down like so, making sure that everything is okay, and it looks good. And then the next thing I often tend to do, go into this, but then, of course, yes, I have to put like transparency and then go to background remover. Whole paint duration, and look at this, it literally gets rid of the whole entire colour, but what's actually happening is that there's actually a lot more green on it, which actually isn't great. Um, there's actually a lot much more chroma king to do so here, hey? And I think what's actually causing it is actually quite a lot more green in it, so I'm off to probably... Oh! <laughs> oh man, I did a jump cut on that! Maybe I should have done a jump cut! Oh, sorry about that, that was a blooper. Um, obviously I see a lot more green on it, maybe I need to reduce the amount of detailing, maybe I need to um, make this image a little bit more contrastive. Uh, there's actually a lot more green outlines here, which is not very good, sorry about that. Um, maybe I need to rework on this sprite here, because obviously, you know, it's still showing signs of green. I need to get rid of some of these greens, um, of such, but I can't, what I can do is probably use okay I can actually use multiples of of these colors of these bits of green I should try and see what bits of green I could take out um it's not looking great that is sorry about that guys um but I see what I can do I see what I could do maybe I need to uh, eye drop and extract bits of colors and stuff I might have to get rid of or I can just simply do that. Ah, look at that! I can get rid of multiples of greens! Yay! Now that's actually much, that's pretty much nice. Look at that! I can just simply copy and paste, and in order to get rid of many, as much greens, it's just like how people do chroma kings and stuff in film industries and blah blah and whatnot. You know, keep on using eyedropper. Oh no, that's not the color I want. Um, let me go through here, and then, okay, that looks interesting, I've just basically got rid of as much green as possible, eh? Uh, copy and paste as much of those thingy bobs, then just get rid of the damn greens that I really don't want. I found a total solution here, but it's very bloody repetitive, you know? I have to pretty much do this over and over and over again, I can't 
quite a bit cool. Oh my goodness, I'm actually doing a very good job here. I'm actually getting rid of the greens that I'm trying to discrete. So, um, I'm just basically copying and pasting so that I can get rid of as much green as possible. Look at that! Look how much green I'm taking out, guys! This is excellent! And I'm copying and pasting again, and then... Is this green? Oh, okay. This was not necessary to do such because I think it was bleeding to, um... I think it's bleeding to black, the background itself. I don't want that, but hey. There you go. Happy now? Look, you know, look, all that green is over. Yay! And goodness, that's what you call chroma king. And when you actually do background transparency, it makes it as if the image isn't, well, something of such. Looks better, doesn't it? I'll show it to you again, going by cutting and splitting. This is the original, and this is the final result. So, that's how Chroma King works on, on animations like that. I have to get rid of as much repetitiveness of, of green involved, and that's a very good thing. Maybe I could just, you know, uh, group them all together by just controlling them, and then I can just simply go into group. Let me just show you. Okay, I found a very good solution here, that if I press down Control, I'm sorry if I can't do this in multiples and multiples of hands actually, but what I can do is definitely go to Shift, that would have been a quicker idea of such. I can just group all of the objects, and then while grouping all the objects of such, it will be a very nice thing. Whoa, steady on tablet, I don't want to... Make a complete fault and a lot of a fault, alright, of just making videos of such. Hold it, hold it, hold it, I'm just trying to talk to the tablet, okay, because I'm... Um... Oh, what the heck am I doing here? This is supposed to be a very adequately produced video, and not something which is sloppy. God damn it. Alright, without going too crazy here, maybe if I just hold it with my head here, uh, with my chin here, um, silly thing, I'm just gonna, um, control, and then I think I should pretty much group them all. I think I can group objects of such. I don't know how you can mesh and mash them up together. Uh, does anyone know how to do that? I love how to group objects and make them as like a great big group of such. Maybe I can do that. You know, group all of the um, the things involved, all of the categories involved, and make it as like one one final result. That would have been nice, actually. You know, Chroma King actually plays a big role, and luckily enough, I've taken out of that logo as such. And you know, I can really decorate the place as as nice as I can. Um, I think I can try and make another video about Chroma King, but I think this is all I could do now. So. If you want to get rid of as much green, well, green is a great color because obviously that's like the most common color that people often tend to use for chroma king and green screening, and hence the name. <laughs> well, of course, there's green screening. It's all about, you know, uh, putting things on the scene. And I might as well probably think, why would people often do that? Like, why would people often use like chroma king to make really, really good elaborate animations or enhanced animations, obviously? I think the main reason why green screening is often very important is because you can actually layer within a background within a background. You know, that's actually a very important thing to actually describe. This rain background was originally blue, if you want to put it as another optional colour. And that's the whole thing. I've made this thing of MS Paint, but I actually did a Chroma King feature. And if I go to here, I've just added background remover. It makes it very nice and very important to do such, and it only accommodates one colour at a time, but if you want to accommodate as many colours as possible, you have to do it repetitively, just like I did with the serpent eagle slash serpent hawk type crying animation I did. And really, that's how I've actually done so far, somehow, so I might as well call that a video. As always, if you really enjoyed in this pretty simplistic video, it's actually quite a very simple video to make. Please give this video a like, subscribe for more for fat videos in the future, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye for now.